Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gates Sports Bar and Grill on Christmas Eve. In the next 10 minutes, we've got all this weekend's sporting action wrapped up for you. And I'm pleased to say that Bristol Rugby Academy product and now first team regular Joe Joyce joins me in the studio. First, most important question, have you got Christmas all wrapped up? Are you sorted? Well, just as by, I got my last bits of pieces done yesterday, so I'm all set now for Christmas. Oh, I'm one of those people that runs around, runs around right up until the last minute. So I've still got the shop next door that we can go to. Um, it has been, it's fair to say, a pretty big week for Bristol Rugby in terms of media announcements and uh, not least with your coaching staff. Yeah, there's a lot of news this week, but with the, all the situation there's been, there's, there's been very good reasons and the boys have reacted very well to it. So with the, with the Matt Sherrick case, I've known him for five years now through Fulton College, through the academy and now through the first team. So I wish him the very best because he's had a massive influence on all the players he's, he's, he's coached since he's been here. So we do wish him the best and hopefully we can send him off with a smile on his face at the end of the year. We all hope you can send him off with a smile as you achieve premiership promotion, let's hope so. Uh, you talk about sort of furthering careers and ambition and, and how far your career has come. Of course, Matt Morgan, uh, slightly newer into the Bristol rugby setup, but we've really seen him flourish over the last year. Yeah, not just that. I think Nipper is a, he's a big personality in the change room and he'll be, he'll be missed very much, but everyone realises the ambitions he got to play for his country and you, you can't stop some, someone from doing that. So we wish him the very best, Matthew Morgan, because mm. he performs brilliant for us. When you talk about international ambition, you can't fault anyone for that. And of course, Steve Borthwick, that ties us in fairly nicely to that. As yeah, well. it does. Uh, Borthwick was only here for 43 days, I think, but I've never seen someone come in at such an impact on the group of, of players as a person and as a coach. I'm sure he would be brilliant for England and uh, hopefully he can uh, one day take the take that, the big role as head coach because I think he's got the ability to do that. Yeah. All right, well, we will uh, talk a lot more about Bristol rugby a bit further in the programme. And I know you're a City fan, aren't you? So you're going to be uh, yeah. watching over the weekend? Yeah, I'm going down Saturday for, for the Charlton game. And uh, hopefully the duel last week could be a turning point in our season and we can start picking up results now because we're starting to need them. And Christmas, obviously, there's a lot of games. And uh, we can't afford to drop many points, so hopefully we can kick on again. Yeah, all right. Well, we will talk that some more. Uh, you'll be interested in this next bit with City. Then, as uh, Joe has just mentioned, the City boys do have a busy, festive period with two games over three days, starting with Charlton Athletic on Boxing Day before travelling to Burnley on the 28th. Well, the team took some time out from training earlier this week to visit a children's hospice, as Adam Baker reports. Bristol City's players and staff turned Santa at this festive time of year during a visit to Children's Hospice South West at Charlton Farm. The Children's Hospice is City's chosen charity for the season, with £15,000 of funds generated already through auctions, donations and bucket collections. As a special Christmas present to the hospice, the entire squad and staff visited to present a brand new therapeutic trampoline. The physiotherapist said that they're desperately wanting a and needing a, a trampoline and so we'll maintain it and uh, with the help of Steve Allen we've raised enough money to, to, to get one, it's just going to bring so much joy. The hospice provides important care to life limited children and their families across the south west and surrounding areas. The Charlton Farm Hospice alone costs £3 million to run every year. They receive approximately 17% of that funding from the government so the rest is dependent solely on the kindness of others through donations. It's the awareness that the lads by being part of this project will we'll generate for the outside world and, and the, the ongoing success of the Charlton Farm with the lads being part of it will, will be huge I'm sure. Everyone got into the Christmas spirit including Marlon Pack and Scott Wagstaff as they joined the choir for a few carols. I definitely need to stick to the football but, but they were very good I have to say um, but uh, no, it's just been a it's been a fantastic day. It really, it really, really has. And you know, this is this is real life. Um, sometimes the lives that we're in is not quite real, um, but this is real life. The visit ended with a special gift for two city fans at the hospice, presented by team captain Aaron Wilbraham. We want you to come and cheer us on and be our mascots against Middlesbrough, and hopefully get us three points. So we know your favourite players, Luke Aidan and Luke Freeman, so they're going to give you the gift right now and uh, well done for being superstars, yeah? Fantastic community spirit there from the squad at this festive time. And just a reminder that the Boxing Day clash against Charlton here at Ashton Gate is a sellout. Uh, Josie, I'm sure you're pleased you got your ticket in time. Yeah, because it's a big one. I think Charlton are in around us in the league. And with the two games, two games in three days we got, yeah. especially with the squad size we got, it's going to be a tough one. So I think it's important 
that on Boxing Day we get a good result because going into the next game we won't be too too fresh, I don't think. Yeah. I know I've mentioned that you are a City fan and have followed the team avidly for, for many years. It has been difficult for them this championship, hasn't it? It was always going to be a tough transition. How do you feel watching them as a fan? Well, it's, when you're in the bottom league, but you can tell when you're watching this Bristol City side, they don't stop, they're always trying and there's, there's not much championship experience in the team. So how well I've done at the moment is brilliant. I think it's more than three or four occasions I've been to Ashley Kate season and they've been a better team and haven't quite got that result so I think it's just a matter of time this year so we start putting results in so mm. I'm not panicking I'm sure the fans aren't either. And uh, you mentioned there about a, a tough training schedule uh, two games in three days you fancy that? I, I definitely couldn't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> well you can put your feet up and have a bit more of a rest because we're now going to hear from Andy Robinson as Bristol Rugby suffered their second defeat in the BNI Cup against Bedford away at Goldington Road they went down 34-17 and director of rugby Andy Robinson had this to say about their performance. We missed a couple of opportunities ourselves early in the first uh, five minutes, uh, which would have uh, got us into the game, but uh, we allowed a bit of too much time and space and uh, yeah, some one-on-one -on -one tackles were missed. And you know, once they got on a roll, you know, they, they played uh, pretty well. And saying that, we had enough opportunities in the game to, uh, to get back into the game, but uh, our error count was too high. Well, Bristol turn their attentions back to the league this weekend on Sunday with a mouth-watering clash against London Welsh. It should be a tight one as ever and expecting probably the biggest walk-up of the season so far. It's always a good one against London Welsh. Yes, and the fans, as you said, the fans always make a massive difference in the Christmas, Christmas fixture. And it's good we've got London Welsh on Christmas because I think us and London Welsh have got a history as well. So the fans will be up for it and definitely the lads will be up for it as well. It is always a tight game against them, isn't it? It is, it is. And in recent history as well, it's, it's gone over way. I don't think one team's pulled away from each other at any fixture. So yeah, it's going to be a big one. Hopefully we can send the fans away with a smile on the face of Christmas. Well, so most of us uh, tend to be uh, recovering from the excesses of Christmas Day. On Boxing Day, you tend to be uh, slouching on a couch, but not for you. You're going to be out training. Well, it's not too bad for us. We've, we've covered a lot of stuff during the week. So Boxing Day is just going to be, I think it's an hour in training of a lot of detail. And then we've got the rest of the day with our family and friends. So it's not too bad. Mm. And we've, we've talked about the fact that you're an academy product. That must play a huge part in the team spirit of Bristol Rugby, to have players that are Bristol born and bred, that have come up through the ranks and would fight virtually until they die to make sure they are in the Premiership. It does. It does mean more because obviously we've been watching Bristol our whole lives. So we've, se we've seen this club in the Premiership. We've, watched, we've been to Ashton Gate with 22,000 sellout against Bath and we want to relive these memories now as a player because the memories we got is, is as kids watching. So we re we're desperate as a group, especially we've got only little group. We really want this club to be in the Premiership and relive it as a player because it's, it was special moments watching it as a kid. So hopefully now we can do it. And you talk about Ashton Gate, you've seen more than most then how much it has changed here over the last 18 months. You talk about a 22,000 sellout, we could be 27,000 sellout against Bath next season, Ho hopefully. Hopefully, that's what we've, <laughs> I think we mentioned that every week in our change room. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Is it written on a wall somewhere? <laughs> yeah. in, our, in our change room, mostly Bristolian lads, and I think Bath and Bristol and Premiership, imagine that. That gets mentioned every week. Mm. So hopefully but happen. there are so many local derbies. I mean, it is almost half of the season could potentially yeah. be local derbies to a certain extent. Exactly. Of Goss, Goss was a big one, and Exeter as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's big games everywhere if we go up. So we were just desperate to go up. Yeah. How, how um, proud have you been to see Ashton Gate change and take shape? Because especially now, since we've seen the uh, West End Trust go up, it really dominates the skyline, doesn't it? It does, it does. I was on the pitch, I think it was two weeks ago. I thought I was on a different stadium. It's, it's so big, but it's, it's brilliant. Once, once it's all done, we've seen the videos, what's going to look like. We're all so excited to play on the pitch once it's done. Well, there certainly have been some uh, amazing developments here, and I'm sure more will come. Best of luck on uh, Sunday, and hope you have a lovely Christmas. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. And just a reminder, you've just heard Joe say how important the fans are, so come on down to Ashton Gate on Sunday 27th. Kick-off at 3 o'clock against London Welsh. Tickets available on the Bristol Sport website. Now to basketball, and it was a rare midweek game for the Flyers as they fell to the second-place team in the BBL, the Leicester Riders. They now have a week off to enjoy the festive period as Joel Osborne reflects on the first half of the season. It's been a mixed season so far for the Flyers. The team find themselves in ninth place heading into Christmas, but with 18 games in the regular season to play, there's still plenty of time to turn things around. It was a slow start for us with four very narrow losses to start the season. And since then we've gone five and five. We won five games, we lost five games with the arrival of Tyrone Lee as well. And obviously we had a great weekend with Plymouth and Cheshire, those two wins, one at home, one away. 
they've put us in a good situation going forward to the new year. We've got Manchester and Plymouth on four wins, and then after that we have ourselves and Sarri and Leeds on five, and then there's another round of teams on, on six wins. So it's, it, it's very close, it's very competitive. Anything can happen in the new year. Um, and I think those 18 games, it will come down to uh, which, one, which team is the best prepared and which team goes on a run, which team can get consecutive wins, and that will make a big difference. Despite battling with injuries early in the campaign, the Flyers head coach insists that making the playoffs remains the club's target come the end of the season. It's not going to be an easy task, but, but you know, I think this year is very evident that the league is very competitive. Injuries are part of a season, you know, they're going to happen and it's kind of how you deal with that. Other guys have to step up and I think we've done that pretty well. We feel like 8 to 10 wins out of those 18 games. We build that momentum that is very much required to go into the playoffs and uh, that's the focus right now. Tickets for the Flyers' first four home games of 2016 are now on general sale. Jet over to bristolflyers.co.uk. And just a reminder, Flyers' next home game, the first of 2016, is Worcester Wolves in the first round of the BBL Trophy on Saturday, January the 9th. Half past seven tip-off is at SGS Wise Arena. And finally, Christmas came early for more than 150 under-12s at Ashton Gate earlier this week as they celebrated the junior Christmas party. It's our second junior members event. We ran the Halloween one. Um, and there's been lots of like Christmas activities, it's meeting Santa, meeting the players, so yeah. We've got the Christmas music on, we've got a Christmas film in the background, all the kids running around, some have dressed up as snowmen and different things, so it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. A couple of days till Christmas um, and everyone's getting in the spirit. It's been really fun and exciting because there's lots of action and stuff in there with the, um, with the, the scrumpy and stuff. I've gone to see Santa and I made some cookies and did lots of activities. Brilliant. And, and what's it been like? Uh, amazing. Because I don't really have this opportunity to come here at Ashton Gate to do this stuff. Doing lots of activities and I've um, been colouring in. Fantastic. And, and what's it been like? Has it been fun? It has been fantastic. It is awesome to be here. Absolutely, I love the stadium. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I think it's really important because, um, like I said, I was saying to one of the little guys, I used to be that little kid, so I know how much it means to me. So, yeah, it's really good, especially before Christmas as well. So, yeah, it's, it's good. I, I enjoy doing things like this, and both me and Mossy were quite excited to come down today and just see the kids because they always got a happy smile. And even though they, they may not know who we are, but by the end of it, they learn our names and they go home and tell their parents and tell their friends that they've met professional rugby players and professional football players. Well, it certainly looks like they had a fantastic time. Make sure you keep your eyes open for the next Juniors event. That will be at Easter time here at Ashton Gate. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed the programme. Have a lovely Christmas and we'll be back next week with a New Year's Eve special.